Netflix's observability system ingests five petabytes of data every day, averaging 10.6 million events per second. Back in March 2025, in a ClickHouse meetup at Netflix HQ, Daniel Muino shared three things that they've learnt along the way. Lesson number one, go low level on ingestion if necessary. They were initially using JDBC batch inserts to get data into ClickHouse, but this was too slow. So they switched to the low level client and used the row binary format instead. This meant doing a bunch of manual data preparation work and it was faster, but still not fast enough. While figuring out how to make it faster, they came across an input format benchmarking blog post written by my colleague, Tom Schreiber. In the blog, Tom showed that the native protocol is even faster than row binary. Unfortunately, this wasn't supported in the Java client. So Netflix built their own encoder that generates LZ4 compressed blocks using the native protocol before sending them to ClickHouse. Now you probably won't need to go this low level, but it's good to have as an option. Lesson number two, avoid expensive work during ingestion. Netflix needed to group similar log messages together a process known as fingerprinting. They attempted to use regular expressions, but that approach didn't scale to 10 million events per second. They've ended up using a generated Lexa using JFlex instead. This way, they can compile patterns into efficient code instead of evaluating regular expressions. Maybe you don't have the exact same problem as Netflix, but the lesson here is to reduce the work that's being done on that hot ingest path. And finally, lesson number three, design for data access. Every event that Netflix stores has a set of tags capturing details like the microservice, the request ID and other custom attributes. They initially stored this as a map up from string to string, but realized that lookups on maps required a linear scan as ClickHouse stores two parallel arrays of keys and values. Their solution was to use the low cardinality type for the keys in the map, and then they sharded the map into 31 smaller maps. So you have different keys in different maps. Their queries then chose the appropriate map to query, reducing the number of keys that need to be scanned. And again, maybe you don't have this exact same problem, but the principle applies broadly. Always consider both what your data looks like and how ClickHouse will actually store and scan it. If you wanna see more ClickHouse use case videos, check out this one next.